Released in September 1995, Mario Clash is probably the least remembered Mario game out there. A fitting game to discuss on Mario Day. Assuming I actually get this video out when I want to, which... That never happens, so... You see in this whenever. It didn't have any sequels, its gameplay is an adaptation of an older title, and... It was on the Virtual Boy. So no wonder almost nobody actually knows what this game is. For a quick history, Mario Clash was originally intended as a side mode for a game called VB Mario Land, which is meant as the fourth game in the Super Mario Land series. We don't know a lot about it, outside of what was in this one playable demo from Space World 1994. I've heard theories that this guy right here kind of looks like Wario, and implies that maybe he's the villain of the game, which wouldn't make sense for a Mario Land title, but I guess now we'll never know since the game was cancelled before it was finished. Mario Clash, of course, would go on to be released, and is the main focus of this video. The game features Mario trying to take back a large building known as the Clash House Tower from some unknown enemy force. I don't really trust the English manual, and I can't find the Japanese one, so our only hints as to the actual story are what's shown in-game. Specifically, the intro shows us this blimp. The symbol on it is vaguely skull-like, and it reminds me of two different groups in the Mario series. First, the Black Sugar Gang from Super Mario Land 3. This inclusion would make sense, since this is originally meant as part of a sequel to the game they are introduced in. However, I think the more likely culprits are, as usual, the Koopa Troop. The skull icon is used for pirates, yes, but also on flagpoles throughout the series. The enemies fought throughout the game are also more commonly associated with Bowser than Captain Syrup, who seems to have a much more original cast of characters under her command. The Japanese wiki also lists the Koopas as the villain of the game. I don't know if this is an assumption or something supported by the text in that language, but the circumstantial evidence is worth noting. The game has 99 levels, each of which is a floor of the Clash Tower. The goal is similar to the original Mario Bros, with the plumber having to defeat every enemy in the stage, with the exception of Koopa Troopas, to reach the next one. And like that game, Mario must attack the various enemies indirectly, this time meaning he needs to hit them with Koopa shells. Upon defeating the 99th floor, Mario returns to the first floor and just continues his fight, even if it seems never-ending. There's no boss at the top of the tower either. The game ends when Mario maxes out the point counter. When that happens, we get an enemy parade showing the various foes fought throughout the game carrying white flags, and presumably leaving the tower. Victory, as always, is Mario's. Point Counter also gives our only real hints in this game's place in the timeline. Every 100,000 points, the game gives us a splash screen featuring a character celebrating your achievement. We have Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, and Bowser, all of which are fairly obvious inclusions for a Mario game. But at 500,000 points, we get our first swerve character, Wario. Alright, so that puts us at least after Super Mario Land 3. The last notable character, is at 800,000 points, featuring Donkey Kong Sr. and Jr. Once again, this puts the game as soon as possible, as we need plenty of time for Donkey Kong III to grow into the menace and eventual hero we know him as today. So we're putting this one right after Super Mario Land 3, as that game takes place immediately after Wario's introductory title. I guess this would also leave room to move up Super Mario Kart and Mario's Tennis if you want, but personally I still want to keep those games before the inclusion of Wario but I would be interested in knowing where else in the timeline you would put this game. Let me know in the comments, or join the Discord to share your own timeline theories with our community. Unfortunately, this game never escaped the Virtual Boy, so it's not purchasable by legal means. Also, this channel in no way supports piracy, so if you have a 3DS, definitely do not look up Red Dragon. Don't do it. It's legal. It would make Mario sad. And that's it for this video. This is a very interesting game to talk about, and it makes me want to learn a lot more about that cancelled Mario Land game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.